Hello and welcome to History in 7 Fact, a show in which we talk about some awesome episodes from humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. The Battle of Little Big Horn is a legendary battle in the United States, fought between the Lakota, Northern Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes and the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the US Army. The battle, which resulted in the defeat of US forces, was one of the most significant actions between the Native Americans and US troops. At the center of it was General George Armstrong Custer, who, together with his troops, became iconic and even heroic figures in American history. The truth, as always, is a little bit different. Custer's last stand has become a part of the myths and legends of the Wild West. The image of General Custer, defeated and surrounded by his dead troops and yet still shooting back, has been portrayed in countless books, paintings and movies. The battlefield, which is in Montana, is a tourist attraction and a national monument, a symbol of the bravery of the American soldier. But what we know had happened on that fateful day, in June 25, 1876, doesn't come from any eyewitnesses. The Native Americans left very few survivors. But they did try to tell the full story of the battle, but were largely ignored, probably because what they had to say was inconvenient. They were painting a different picture of desperate soldiers running away and shooting aimlessly. So what did happen? It was only in 1983, almost 100 years after the battle, that archaeologists were allowed to dig at this site, after a prairie fire had swept the land. Almost immediately some inconvenient truths emerged. The archaeologists spent years digging up human remains, bullets and bullet casings. With these discoveries they were able to determine the soldiers' positions, thus recreating the actual battlefield. In short, what they found was that the battle was a general chaos, in a desperate situation. The bullets found showed that many soldiers were firing over their shoulders, aimlessly, as they were running away. But how do the positions of bullet casings help us determine what the soldiers were doing? It's simple. A soldier firing while running will leave a string of bullets behind him, while someone standing in place will leave a pile. While studying the battlefield, scientists also couldn't find any bullet casings from Colt revolvers, where the soldiers supposedly had their last stand. According to the tales of this battle, General Custer and his soldiers switched to their revolvers when they ran out of bullets to make their last stand, but this doesn't seem to hold up either. According to the natives who participated in this battle, the American soldiers didn't have time to switch to revolvers and the battle only lasted as long as it takes a hungry man to eat a meal. The Battle of Little Bighorn was part of the Great Sioux War of 1876. The reason why this war broke out was, well, gold. You see, gold had been discovered in the Black Hills, and pretty soon settlers began to encroach onto Native American lands. The Sioux and Cheyenne refused to cede ownership of the land, which was sacred to them. By the autumn of 1875, the Native American tribes realized they will have to fight for their rights on that land. Lakota, Sioux and Cheyenne warriors gathered in Montana under the leadership of the legendary Sitting Bull. The federal government sent 2,500 soldiers to wipe them out quickly. The army assumed the natives will follow their usual tactics, avoiding direct clashes and preferring skirmishes. So the plan was simple. Find their camps and overwhelm them through superior numbers and firepower. Custer's 7th Cavalry Regiment left behind the infantry and advanced west, but their orders were not to engage the enemy, but to wait until the infantry would catch up with them. But on the evening of June 24, at Mud Creek, scouts reported to Custer that they had spotted the enemy in a valley due west. On the morning of June 25th, Custer's scouts informed him about what they saw. They reported a large number of Indians, more than they had bullets. But the general wasn't afraid of their superiority in numbers, he was more worried about them spreading out. 
However, Custer had no idea that he was about to face the largest concentration of Native American troops in history. In addition, they were in possession of about 700 firearms, which were soon to be put to use against the Americans. In preparation of the attack, Custer split his regiment into three battalions, one to block the enemy's retreat and two for the actual attack. Major Reno was supposed to attack from the east and was expecting an easy win. But that didn't happen. The enemy didn't run away, they held their ground and mounted a massive counterattack. Reno had to retreat and on his way met with the troops of Captain Benteen, who was supposed to cut off any enemy retreat. The two battalions were utterly defeated, but no message about this reached General Custer. He was leading his men towards the enemy camp, planning to swiftly wipe out their troops. In 1868, he attacked a Cheyenne village near the Washita River in Oklahoma, killing women and children in addition to warriors and transforming him into a national hero. Because of this, Custer had a bad reputation among the natives who wanted him dead. Custer was probably trying to repeat that victory, but that was far from what happened. The general was expecting to find a band of panicked warriors running from Major Reno's troops. He was sure of a victory. But what he met was in fact a group of well-organized soldiers. The Americans were soon the ones panicking. They couldn't even see where were the enemy soldiers, so they started shooting blindly. And before they knew it, the Native Americans were upon them. Custer's last stand was simply their last position because they had nowhere to retreat. Another legend surrounding this battle was that the Americans piled up the bodies of dead horses for defense, but this isn't true either. There were no horses in the area left and the soldiers had no time to mount any kind of defense. The news of Custer's death reached the East Coast on July 4th, on the day the United States celebrated their 100th Independence Day. Naturally, this sparked a wave of fury and patriotism, so nobody was wondering just how did the natives manage to band together and fight like a modern army. Instead, the generals of the country were rightfully blaming Custer's tactics, while the public wanted someone else to blame and the blame had fallen onto Major Reno, who survived the attack. The army accused him of not helping Custer, but was in the end acquitted of any blame. Nevertheless, in the nation's eyes, Reno remained a coward who abandoned his general. The famous Lakota leader, Sitting Bull, was the one who managed to unite his people against the colonists. He didn't teach them any new tactics, but managed to rally them under a common cause to resist the policies of the United States. It was the rest of the leaders of different tribes who managed to secure such a great victory. Archaeologists used metal detectors to find the empty shell casings. Because each gun leaves a unique mark on a bullet, most of the casings found could be paired to a gun. This way scientists were able to paint a pretty clear picture of what really happened. Nothing worked in Custer's plan, and most of his troops were caught in crossfire. They had no time to react or mount any defenses, and retreat was impossible. This was a harsh defeat, but it didn't help the natives a lot. Custer's death brought on a wave of donations and volunteers to the army, and a thirst for revenge. The greatest victory of Native Americans in fact led to their greatest defeat which ended in their deportation to newly created Indian reservations. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.